turn to the first of our Bible readings uh, this morning, we're looking at Romans. This is our last week in Romans. You may be thinking, oh, thank goodness for that. We finally got to the end. Um, hopefully you've had something that, you've, uh, that has been helpful. We're looking at the last two chapters, an overview uh, today. And so we look at uh, chapter 15, and I'm going to read the first 15, uh, sorry, the first 13 uh, verses. And I'm reading from the New International Version. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbour for his good to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity amongst yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs, so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, I will sing hymns to your name. Again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises to him, all you people. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations, the Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's so much in there that um, it's almost worth a rereading, but you can do that at home. But that beautiful prayer at the end, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him.
the band are going to keep that theme of praise and focus on that mission of spreading the gospel to people that haven't heard the message. And our piece is a piece called Great Lakes Mission. It's by Land Valentine, a famous Canadian composer. And it's all talking, it's in with the theme of the meeting, how can we be ambitious with the gospel? Well, this piece is a nod to the past in Canada, to two guys, Jack Addy and Joe Ludgate, who set out on the Christian mission to set up the army in London and Hamilton, Ontario. And it combines two songs, one of them contemporary, that we sang at the very beginning, Show Your Power, O Lord, My God. It's in a bit more of an upbeat arrangement than we did when we sang earlier, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, but it also thinks of all the, the saints and all the work that's gone on in the Canadian army and all the army since. And it has the tune for all the saints who from their labours rest. And this morning the band particularly think of a couple of the core saints, Viv and um, Len, who have gone and done their labour and done their service and now rest with God. So Great Lakes Mission.
Lord, may that just um, be true to us for us wherever we are. And Lord, would you just take your word and use it to your glory. Amen. Amen. Just, just before I start, I just, I just need to say that throughout this morning, the word that has stood out to me um, in the songs and, um, and in the Bible reading, which didn't stand out to me when I was preparing, and is the word hope. I, and, and I just want to say that if that word is for somebody here this morning, then grasp it. If you need hope this morning, then that's just, I feel there's a word there. Um, because it's just jumped out at me this morning. So there we are. It's, uh, it's starting to get to holiday season, isn't it? For those who are fortunate enough to, to get away, um, it, it's starting to get to that season where we, we see people coming and going and uh, they're off uh, on their holidays. And my family know that if they are going away anywhere, they have to let me know when they get there. There's a phrase in our house which goes something like, if we don't let mum know, she'll think we're dead in a ditch. <laughs> Any other mums like that? Yeah, absolutely. You can't help it. It's part of, part of our makeup. Um, we've got some very funny stories about that, which I won't bore you about just now. But I like to know when they have arrived. Um, because, you know, I know that they're safe. It's the end of their journey. And yet, in some ways, it's just the beginning of their journey because they've only just arrived at the destination that uh, they've got to and the holiday is just about to begin. As far as our Romans uh, series is concerned, it is the end of our journey in that sense. Or perhaps it is just a new beginning for us. Um, or at least a continuation of our discipleship journey as we've, we've taken on board all that we've learnt, um, the things that we've questioned, the things that we've, we've discussed in this fascinating letter that Paul wrote to the believers in Rome such a, a long time ago. There's so much in it. We, we've kind of done a whistle-stop tour. I know it's 10 weeks, but it would, it would take years to to go through it all. Um, but I w so we'll probably return to it at some point, I'm sure. Um, but this is where we've been. If you, if, uh, for those of you who've, who've uh, been, you'll remember we, we, went, we started with the gospel, then we dipped down into sin and we looked at what sin was. Then we looked at salvation, which is always good. Um, we looked at peace, freedom, hope, mystery, where there is this, um, you know, there is a mystery about God. We looked at devotion. How do we live this out? We looked at community, about how do we live this out together? And then today we finish with mission, about taking it out into the world. It has been a, much a whistle-stop too, but that is where we've been, and I hope that's been helpful um, to you. The first few weeks we spent considering uh, Christian doctrine, about what we believe about Jesus. Um, and then a few weeks about looking at how does that impact our lives you know, what impact does those beliefs have in terms of our living out the gospel uh, that is explained in the first half? And today, as I've said, we've reached the last two chapters. And Paul helps us to consider three things. First of all, our mission, then our motivation for mission, and the means of our mission. I do like every now and again to have an alliterated heading. Our mission, our motivation, and the means that we have. And so in Romans 15, Paul reveals his ambitious plans for further mission. It tells us that he will visit Rome, and then he's going to head off to Western uh, Europe, so kind of Spain area. And despite his life, you know, not going to plan on many occasions and facing many, many challenges en route, if you're interested in seeing what those challenges are, if you look at Acts uh, the book of Acts, verses 27 and 28, you'll just see some of the challenges that, um, that he had. But it never stopped Paul sharing the gospel. And now we are called to that same mission. Even when life is tough, there are surprising opportunities um, that, that we have to play uh, our part in God's great mission. And do I dare say it, sometimes it's in those tough moments that actually God brings those opportunities along, which reminds us of the hope that we have in Jesus, and we kind of share it from a, <coughs> excuse me, from a very real place. <clears throat> but it's so easy, isn't it, to get distracted 
<coughs> and to keep our eyes kind of down when, um, when things are hard. The other day I was walking along the street and I realised that I'd actually looked down for, for a few minutes. And I thought, what's that about? Actually, there's something about when we lift our heads up, it changes our whole mood, um, which is helpful. And Paul, Paul's example calls us to hold our heads up, to look up and uh, keep our eyes open for mission. And just a reminder, we've, we've looked at this over this time. <clears throat> what is our mission? For many of you, I don't need to say it, but it's as simple as this. And, and Colin's already um, talked about this, to share Jesus with others. It's as simple as that. To let them know what we have experienced and the impact that he has on our lives. To, to know, to let people know that they are loved by God. Whatever their past is, whatever their present is, that they have a future with him. That they have hope in him. And that the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit can be theirs as well. To let people know that everyone is welcome, that everyone is welcome and deeply loved. And chapter 16 kind of nods to, to this idea of this inclusion. And we mentioned this in the very, very first um, session on Romans because it shows us how diverse the early church was. And this was a slide that I used way back then. It's a list of all the people that are mentioned in Romans 16, which include Greeks, Latin, Jewish names, as well as those belonging to wealthy people and to poor people. And as we said in week one, it just shows that this church fellowship in Rome was so diverse, including those from different backgrounds, from different cultures and different classes. And that leads us on to Paul's motivation. In Romans 15, Paul cites several Old Testament texts and anchors his motivation in God's promises to Israel and the hope that the Gentiles will have as part of God's people. Over the past few weeks, we've learned about the ways in which Paul has argued for this equal access um, to, to the promises of God for the Gentiles as well as the Jews as God's chosen people. He goes to, to great pains to say that the gospel is for all. It's for everybody. We're also reminded of the unity of the church. That has been a huge theme throughout the letter. And again, Paul anchors that way back in the Old Testament one last time. And he explains how it's part of his own personal calling. Paul's ultimate motivation for mission was to bring all nations to Jesus as a united and a multicultural family of faith. And I've said it again, and I'm going to say it again. You know, the fact that the gospel has always been for everyone is good news. In fact, it's not just good news, it's great news. Because it means it includes me, and it includes you, and it includes everybody here, and everybody out there for as far as the world goes on. No one is excluded. And that's the power of the gospel we proclaim. Because it's not about what we do, it's about accepting the love of Jesus and what he has done for us. And that's why it is for everyone. You know, often, you know, we can feel um, inadequate or, or afraid or maybe even a bit complacent about sh uh, sharing the gospel. Um, but this good news, this great news, the same gospel, gospel that motivated Paul should also motivate us beyond our fears, beyond our complacency, beyond any inadequacies that we might feel. Because it's too good not to share. It's too good not to share. And you know, many of us know the, the blessing that we receive when we take that opportunity to share the gospel with somebody else. And that leads us on to how we might do that, our means. In Romans 15, verses 17 to 20, Paul describes details of his own ministry and he gives reasons why he can be trusted as a servant of Jesus. And he mentions three things. He mentions words and actions. He mentions signs and wonders and words of truth proclaimed. And he sees it as his calling as a follower of Christ to share the gospel with all people. 
And I wonder whether we still have that passion that we sang about a little while for sharing the good news of Jesus. You know, sometimes when we've been a Christian for a, for a long time, we've kind of lost that initial excitement that we have. Um, I, I, and it's really wonderful to see people who have responded to the gospel, but we need to keep sharing it. We need to keep sharing it. Primarily in words and actions, because again, we've heard it this morning, in the way that we treat other people, uh, the way that we um, prefer other people's needs over our own. J David spoke about that last week. You know, as a church leader, it, it's so wonderful when we see glimpses of, of what I would say are glimpses of glory. Um, and when we see this happening in words and in actions. You know, it's wonderful when we see people in the congregation praying with each other, either before or after a meeting. It's just so beautiful to see. And, you know, it doesn't just happen on Sundays. This week, um, we, we had parent and toddlers going on in this hall. And um, I'd, I'd gone to, to answer the phone or something. And as I walked in, right in the middle of all the noise and all the chaos and all the crazy and the doing life that was going on, somebody was standing praying with one of our mums. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I wonder what an impact that had on the others who saw that. The person who did it did it for no glory. It's just it comes naturally. And it was the right thing to do, having had a conversation with this mum. You know, it was great to see new people coming along on Sundays because somebody has just been kind to them while they were working. I hope Chris doesn't mind me saying but last week, a gentleman, was it last week? I think it was last week. A gentleman came along and I asked him, you know, how we'd come to the Salvation Army. He said, Chris serves me in Tesco's. And I asked her what she'd done at Easter. And she told me she'd been in the Salvation Army and that she's a Christian. So he said, I thought I'd come along because she's kind to me. It's not rocket science, as, as uh, Colin has said. And you all know that it's not just down for me and David. You know, in a lot of ways, you have more contact with, I was going to say normal people, but you know what I mean, uh, with, um, with, um, with, with people who are outside the church that, than we have. And so you have more, sometimes more opportunities. Um, and it is wonderful to see, um, you know, when people are living out the gospel in words um, and in deeds. The second means that Paul used were signs and wonders that God enabled. I know this is one of those that, you know, you might think, well, you know, I'm a little bit sceptical about that. You know, maybe that was for back then. I'm not sure we see signs and wonders anymore. But I, I'm going to give you a right up-to-date example of what I believe was a sign and a wonder. And it, it does relate back to Alpha. And um, before the first session of Alpha uh, this week, we prayed, we were in the sanctuary, and we prayed that God would make sure there was enough food to go around. Because we were conscious that the kind of people kept coming. Um, Helen had asked uh, Charis, um, because bless her, she was catering for us, uh, to cater for 50 just in case. Thinking that we've, we kind of knew there'd be probably 38 or 39, and a bit extra just in case. Um, so we served 52 meals. And there were two big bowls left over. Now, you might think, oh, you know, Charis was over generous. Oh, no, no. We, we had good, good portions. She had cooked for 50 people. She's a professional chef. She knows what she's doing. I tell you, my heart was racing because I think we had a feeding of the 5,000 moments. Because we had baskets left over. Well, we had bowls of, what was it? Bolognese left over. There should not have been food left over. But there was. Absolutely. We, we, I kept saying, we've got baskets over. I think people thought I was a bit crazy, but I believe that was a wonder. I absolutely do. God enabled us to feed everyone who came through those doors, and we all had a good-sized portion as well. And the final means that, and that's just one, I'm sure you can think of others. The final means that Paul used was to proclaim words of truth. You know, sometimes God might give you a word of truth uh, to pass on, and you might think, oh, it sounds a bit daft. 
I, ch I was challenged myself. That's why I had to share that word about hope. Because I believe that's for somebody here. You know, this week I heard of someone who was waiting for results after surgery. And a Christian friend said to her that God had told her to tell her it would be better than expected. And she shared that message. A few days later, she went for her appointment and the consultant said, it all worked better than expected. The exact phrase. The exact phrase. Now again, you know, you might dismiss that as coincidence and that's, that's up to you. Um, you could do that. But I actually believe that came from God. And that that lady was, was obedient to the promptings of God. And, uh, and that was a word from him. And I think that's a bit of a sign and wonder as well. So I don't think the days of signs and wonders have gone. <coughs> so how do we live in the light of this? Let me return to that long list of those individual uh, <coughs> believers in the church that Paul addressed in chapter 16. <coughs> Jews and Gentiles. Oh, thank you. Men and women. Slaves and free. I think that helps us to understand that we're all part of the story. We're all part of the story. Regardless of our background, <coughs> regardless of where we've been, where we are, we're all con called to continue in Paul's mission to <coughs> proclaim Christ to the glory of God. And you know, it may be that there's, there's some here today who haven't actually experienced Jesus for themselves. And, um, and so what I would say to you is when you do, then you'll be part of that story of sharing it because you won't be able to help yourself. Because when you've been touched by Jesus, you can't help yourself. It comes out in so many ways. And you know, maybe it's as simple as taking the opportunities that come along to, to pray with people. <clears throat> you know, some people say, oh, I don't know what to say. God translates what we say. <laughs> I often feel incredibly faltering when I pray with somebody, but I just kind of, in my heart, I'm saying, Lord, make sense of that. <laughs> the actual, just the doing of it will encourage people to show kindness in natural, easy ways. Maybe it's about inviting people to, to something that's an easy, an easy way in to a social event. Or to Alpha, there's still... Do you know what? We, even if we have 60 come on, 70 come on Wednesday, there'll be enough food because God will sort it out. Um, but if you, if you want to come along to Alpha on Wednesday, I know we're at divisional councils, we're not going to be here. And I'm gutted I'm not going to be here. Um, but, um, you know, if you're thinking, actually, I don't, I'd like to do that, just find out a little bit more or renew some of those, those, um, those beliefs that I have and, and in a safe place share you know, questions and things, then please, please come along. Maybe it's about volunteering in some way. Um, you know, there's lots of opportunities. You know, at BH1 at the moment, they, they need volunteers to serve tea and coffee, to, to sort clothes out, to do all kinds of just what, what seem like um, mundane things. But actually, when you do it as if you're serving Jesus, then he will give you opportunities and you will bless people. And if you're interested in that, then just come and talk to me. And if any of that isn't possible, then the most important thing you can do is to pray. Is to pray for each other, for our community, for the world, for the activities that are going on in here and over at, at BH1. And I would pray that our experience of Jesus and his love would motivate us not to keep this wonderful message to ourselves. And that we will be ready, just as we've just sung, just where he's placed us to share his love and the good news of the gospel. I hope, I hope God says something to you, not because of my words, but just because of who he is. Um, and we're, we're going to sing a song um, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful song um, written a good time ago now, but uh, it, it talks about the fact, you know, it just has to stress some questions. But it says, we, we've been called from the byway to proclaim God's wonderful love. It says, there is mission in my living, there is meaning in my word. And it asks us to reflect on that. You know, have I lost that sense of mission that inspired my early zeal? 
just ask us to say again, you know, is this uh, something I need to think about? And you know, this morning, whether, if you don't know Jesus and you want to know him, then come and speak to one of us. If you want to come and kneel here or sit on a chair or come and stand, somebody will come and pray with you. Or if you want to go, do you know what? I want to get that motivation back again. Just respond either where you are or however feels right for you. Let's sing these verses through. Thank you, Joy. to that prayer and the very very end of Romans uh, chapter 16 the last chapter says this and I'll use this as a benediction now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all nations might believe and obey him to the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.